Hello, my name is Justin Brown and I am the founder and lead investigator of Interface Death. In this episode of Quick Tips, I would like to talk about the precautions you should take if you are going to do residential cases or investigate cases for business owners and everything that would fall under that category. Um, there's a lot of reasons why paranormal investigators would like to do those cases. The number one probably is they want to help people. Um, other reasons would involve trying to stay busy because you know a lot of the uh, notoriously haunted locations that you can go out and investigate, you have to pay a lot of money, you have to organize a lot of people to help pay those fees, and not everybody out there has hundreds and thousands of dollars to pay these fees. So they go out and try to find things that they can do to help for their research and help you know, push the paranormal field forward. So they go to these homes or businesses you know, to help people validate what they may be experiencing and what they may not be. So there's a lot of things that you want to do and precautions you want to take if you're going to do residential cases. And the first thing I always suggest is you go out and you get an LLC attached to your paranormal group. And uh, LLC stands for Limited Liability Company. And basically what it is, is if anybody would to go sue you after you investigated their home or business, you cannot be sued for more than what your company is worth. So if somebody wanted to sue you for $100,000, half a million, or even more than that, um, they cannot because you you have an LLC, so they can't sue you if your company is only worth five, ten thousand dollars, or whatever it may be. They can't exceed that, so that is a very good protection to have in place for you when you go out to investigate. In, in the case of you being sued, now there's a lot of other things that you need to do. You need to have forms prepared by lawyers or somebody who knows the law in your state so you can be covered you know in the case of some um, being liable for something so um, there's a lot of forms there's like templates of forms that you could probably find online but i would suggest that you go to a lawyer or someone who knows the law very well and actually type up a you know paper that they can sign and fill out that lets them know what you're not liable for and you know pr what your protections are so you are in a legal agreement of what they cannot do against you in the event of them you know not having you know the outcome that they would like so that's the very most important thing I can tell you up front is to have all that in place I know it takes a little bit of money and time to have that and it's a little bit of a hassle but trust me it's worth it to go and do that if you want to be serious about investigating residential homes and helping people you have to protect not only you and your the reputation of your business and your project but your members as well everybody in the group you need to have listed under the LLC I believe it's only like in Ohio it may be only like 135 bucks give or take to file it yourself so if as long as you don't make any mistakes and you know you know how to fill out the paperwork and it's not too difficult you can go file it yourself and become an LLC without having a lawyer to help you do that because lawyer fees can be high but um, there's a lot of things I would like to talk about other than the legal side of it um, there's a lot of things that you can run into that can create a problem or that could you know make your experience investigating a whole more business unfavorable and um, one of those things I would like to talk about is weeding out the ones that you should do and the ones that you should not do um, if you're going to advertise your email address or your number as someone who can be contacted you know to investigate a residential case um, you need to definitely consider not only doing a background check on the um, like on the home or the building but doing a background check on the people that you're investigating you're not only investigating the home or the business but you're investigating the people and that I cannot stress more to you um, get access to their social media accounts do a background actual background check at you know their county you know 
sheriff's office, get a background check them, make sure you know you know who you're dealing with, what they've done, and so on. Um, go on their Facebook, go on their Twitter, do everything you can to look and see what their activity is as far as who they are, what they're about, and everything and that's involving in their lives. Because all that information is critical and important to know about when you're going into a case. So please take that under consideration. Um, you also want to schedule an interview and you want to, before you actually go to the home, you want to make sure you at least talk to them on the phone. Do not set up an investigation just by only speaking to them through email or through instant messaging or text. Um, you want to get them on the phone, talk to them, um, get your bearings on who they are and what their problem is and uh, go from there. You want to set up an interview and maybe do a preliminary survey of the home. You may take readings, you may do a walkthrough, um, get every single detail about what they're experiencing and what their problem is and make it clear to the client what you can do for them and what you can't do for them. Okay, It's very important that not only do you do a preliminary you know, interview and a walkthrough with them, you want to let them know that you're not a miracle worker, that the paranormal is very, very hard to understand, and that you're limited on how you can help them and you need to convey to them that they should not have high expectations for getting a result that they want, but you want to know and identify what kind of result they want so you can strive and try to do that for them. Um, let them know that you know it's not in your best interest to you want to convey to them that you believe them and that you're concerned but you want to also convey to them that you're all about documenting to validate what they're experiencing so they can have peace of mind um, if you cannot do that for them you shouldn't try to you know go beyond what you can document and try to speculate on what's going on you want to definitely have something tangible to hand them that's not only unexplainable but you know that can be su supporting evidence of a haunting or whatever they're claiming um, if you if the paranormal phenomena you know has something to do with something outside of your knowledge or expertise there's no experts in the paranormal field but it may involve something spiritual where you have to um, get in contact with say a priest um, depending on the religion sometimes it's a shaman sometimes it's a psychic medium if they request that type of service and you don't have that in your paranormal group you want to go outside your paranormal group and have affiliations with people in that case and you want to try to have them locally okay because somebody across the country or across the world may not be able to respond to the case so having the affiliations like that can be helpful but when you go in to a residential home or a business you want to make it clear that in a four hour visit one hour visit uh, even a 12 hour investigation full investigation that it is very unlikely that you will experience and let alone document something to validate what they're experiencing okay you need to be very honest about that um, if you're willing to go the extra mile and do whatever it takes to do that for them, it can take a very, very long time at the location to do the proper investigation and the amount of time that it would take for the phenomena to occur, and so you can document it. Um, you want to make sure that you let your client know that not only will it take time to document something, it's going to take time to review everything that you record. because. You know, no matter how many investigators you have, you have equipment that are extensions of your eyes and ears so you can later go back and review everything so you know you don't miss what you couldn't see with your eyes and hear with your ears. And all the other devices that detect environmental readings as well, you definitely want to pour over them and try to correlate something unexplainable, anomalous to them that would support what they're experiencing or maybe even explain some things so you also want to let them know that you're going to try to exhaust every single way to explain this normally 
Um, you want to try to debunk everything you possibly can, especially flickering lights, you know, lighting issues, voices. You want to make sure if they're if they live in a densely populated area, how the sound travels in the home, um, how well you can hear people outside or your neighbors. Um, is the acoustics in the house um, weird to where you know you think one thing's coming from one room when it's actually coming from s somewhere else? You you def you just definitely want to exhaust every possible explanation that it can explain away what they're experiencing because that also can give them peace of mind. Now you're going to run into those people that are not going to like your review of their case. They're not going to like your explanations. Okay. And it can result in sometimes unfavorable outcomes. They may bash you. Um, they may already have it in their mind that their house is haunted. And if you tell them that their house is not haunted, they may be angry about that and there's going to be some unfavorable side effects from investigating people's homes so I emphasize you want to weed out those people after when you interview them and be upfront with them how would you, you ask them straight up how would you feel if I told you everything you experience is explainable and it's not a ghost and it's not a haunting it's not a demon you ask them straight up and depending on their answer you have to make a judgment call. You have to, you know, tell yourself, is this person worth my time? You're, you know, especially if you're doing it on your own time with no compensation whatsoever, other than having a field to research and having something to do to help you further your research. So these are all things, you know, I can't emphasize more to you. You want to protect yourself. You, it's very, very hard for some people to go out and find things to do and if you're just starting out you know someone calling you up and telling you that they got something going on you know green green teams want to rush in do not rush in set it up be very organized be very businesslike be very meticulous on how you do it you know you want to have the proper forms you want to be protected you want to be insured you want to have every T crossed I dotted and you want to just be the best you can be. Now, um, if you have a website or an online presence, you want to have a form that they can download and fill out and email to you. That is another good tool that you can have. So you can have a, like a preliminary screening. So you can have you know that information with you before you even make a phone call to the person. Is this somebody that I even want to talk to on the phone based on the answers to the questionnaire and the forms that you can prepare and there's also you know templates and uh, forms that are out there that can you can use to kind of like tailor how you want to do that if you have any any more questions concerning the dangers the um, precautions you need to take the methodology and the protocols that regards you know or involves investigating residential cases and businesses, especially businesses, because there's more liability, you know, involved in those cases. So if you have any more questions, please contact me on my webpage or email me at justinbrown at interfacedeath.net or just go to interfacedeath.net and contact me there. Um, I'd be willing to answer your questions to the best of my ability. And if you have any suggestions on the subject matter that I did not mention that you think is important for people to know, please let me know because I will communicate any useful information and your feedback is very critical in what we do to try to learn and grow every day and be better at what we do. Because the people that take this seriously need the information, they need the feedback. And I hope this these videos in this quick tip series do that very thing. I want them to help people. I want to engage the paranormal community and people with similar interests in order for, uh, for us all to be better and to push the paranormal field forward. So until next time, you take care of yourself and I bid you farewell. Please don't forget to stop by interfacedeath.net, subscribe to our YouTube channel, our mailing list, check out our social media links, follow us, keep up to date and interact. And again, give us feedback. We'll talk to you again. See ya.